Hi. Hola. Hi, here is Mr. Dose. This is Michael Bradley. Hey, I'm Memphis. Hey. Hola. Hello. I'm here with Soccer.com. 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 And I'm talking with my friends at Soccer.com. See you soon. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the Nike Hypervenom X Proximo indoors in the latest Floodlights Glow Pack colorway. Now inside the box, all you get are the shoes themselves. They do not come with any extras. And of course, here is a look at the shoe. Now being that this is part of the Floodlights Glow Pack, there are glow in the dark elements that you are gonna to get to see in action a little bit later in the video. We're gonna take a look at all the details of the colorway itself, talk tech specs, performance features, take a look at the weight of the shoe, as well as take a look at how these things fit and feel on feet. So if you are interested in learning more, please stick around and watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, there'll be a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $150 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, little pop-up on screen, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. Starting off with the colorway, this of course being part of the Floodlight lights glow pack there are glow in the dark elements and they're super super bright so if you're looking to stand out any shoe from this pack will do that for you very very nicely now obviously it does have glow in the dark elements to it and the first thing whenever people see glow in the dark on a soccer cleat is they say what's the point because you don't play soccer in the dark granted you're right but that doesn't necessarily mean that they shouldn't put it there just for the sake of the cool factor it doesn't hurt for it to be there it doesn't affect the performance of the shoe in any way but again you get the glow in the dark thing which i think honestly is kind of a cool little added aspect of the colorway itself now the color is a combination of three main shades of orangish pinkish red if that makes any sense you have bright crimson hyper orange and total crimson and uh, if you're familiar with those colors, it doesn't necessarily make all that much sense in terms of what you actually see on the shoe. The majority of the upper is kind of more of like a reddish pink color, I would say. Uh, very, very bright, looks pretty cool. You have that for the majority of the upper, the laces, as well as the exposed fly knit for the collar and midsection of the shoe. Uh, you do have kind of a lighter shade of almost like a salmon pinkish orange color in the Nike swoosh on the front and back, as well as the kind of spiky hypervenom graph going around the outside edge. The similar color to that is right here in the midsole. Then you have more of a kind of brighter pink color for the outsole itself with an orange Nike swoosh there at the bottom. Now in terms of what glows in the dark, that is basically all of the lighter areas on the upper as well as the rubber outsole. And I'll flash a little image on screen of exactly how it looks when they are glowing in the dark. Both Nike swooshes glow, the little hypervenom graphic glows around the actual um, kind of uh, little kind of crackle graphic. So that's kind of cool in the dark itself. And then of course the entire outsole also glows in the dark. Um, of course, with the Floodlights Glow Pack, with the, they went with the glow-in-the-dark elements, which I think is kind of cool, but they really missed out on the laces. These laces do not glow in the dark. Luckily, SR4U Laces does have a glow-in-the-dark laces option. I'll flash a little image on screen if you guys are interested in seeing what that looks like on the shoe. And if you're interested, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen, as well as a link down below. So if you're interested in a pair of glow-in-the-dark laces for your Floodlights Glow Pack shoes, be sure to go ahead and check that out. Uh, but all in all, very cool looking colorway, super, super bright. I think they're nice. What do you guys think? Leave your comment down below, let me know. And with that being said, let's move on to the tech specs so we can learn a little bit more about the overall performance. As far as performance is concerned, the Hypervenom X Proximo is a very good shoe. It should be, because it's essentially the upper from the Hypervenom Phantom 2 minus ACC, on an indoor or turf bottom. So if you wear the Phantom 2 regularly in firm ground, AG or soft ground, and you need a pair of indoor or turf shoes that have a very similar fit and feel, this is kind of what you're looking for. So of course, as you can see, you do get the newer style honeycomb mesh base upper that happens to be the older style upper from the original Hypervenom Phantom 1. Nonetheless, it offers a very nice touch on the ball 
kind of on the thinner side, but it does have that little bit of a padded sensation to it just because of the density and thickness of the actual honeycomb mesh base to it. And then the polyurethane layer on top, which is also called Nike skin, acts as that protective layer and allows for the upper to not be overly slick, just in terms of grip on the ball. Um, again, more of a barefoot sensation, but not quite as thin as what you're going to find from the Mercurial line. Uh, no ACC, all conditions control. That's not something that you feature on the Hypervenom X Proximo. Uh, you do, of course, have the Flywire cables that run through the midfoot from the base of the sole into the lacing system as you would on a pair of Phantom 2s. They really do their part in terms of locking your foot and holding it in place when you pull the laces tight. Off-center lacing system, of course. You do have the kind of filled in area where the laces are in an elasticated fly knit material, which of course extends into the mid cut aspect, aspect the dynamic fit collar, uh, which as I've mentioned many times before with these collars, there's no ankle support here. There's no real structure to this. It's not gonna restrict mobility in any way at all. And it doesn't really offer much protection either. It's really more of an extension piece that happens to be attached to the rest of the shoe. It does change up the fit in the heel area, something we'll talk about a little bit later during the on feet portion of the video. But for the most part, it's more of an aesthetic thing and kind of the cool thing at the moment in high-end soccer shoes. Nonetheless, it's there and it doesn't really have an impact on performance. Uh, internally, you do have a heel counter, um, which is decently solid, really no issues there. Internally, there is a smooth synthetic leather heel liner with some padding back there, pretty decent. Again, it kind of takes some getting used to. There is a little bit of quirkiness to the fit in the heel area. Uh, the insole, fully removable. It features a mesh liner on top and is made from a single layer of this black foam. It actually has some decent thickness to it, so no complaints in regards to that. The midsole, this features a Phylon midsole uh, with a decent amount of underfoot cushioning. It's kind of in between what you'll get from the Mercurial X line and the Magist X Tiempo X line, which feature Lunar Lawn foam cushioning. So this is kind of that middle ground where it's not as heavily cushioned as the Tiempo and Hypervenom models and not quite as low profile as the Mercurials, if that makes any sense. Nonetheless, I would kind of say that it's more trending towards the low profile side of things. You have some decent underfoot cushioning in the heel area. Again, the way this midsole actually looks on the outside isn't necessarily where your foot sits. You sit a little bit lower in the shoe. This is more so there for stability reasons. Uh, so don't think that you're actually sitting this high up inside of the shoe itself. Uh, but again, there is some decent amount of underfoot cushioning in there, in there. You get some good impact protection. So if that's something that you like, that's what you get here with the Hypervenom X Proximo. Around the toe, you can see that the rubber outsole does kind of lip up, acting as kind of a protective layer with the nylon stitching. So they did keep durability in mind. And then of course, you do have the indoor bottom on this particular pair. This colorway is available in a turf variation as well. But speaking specifically on the indoor model, it does have this kind of hexagon pattern as far as traction is concerned, it does work quite well. It's a durable kind of rubber uh, compound, so it grips nicely on indoor courts and any kind of, I guess, more uh, futsal specific type environment. But if you wanna use these on concrete, asphalt, and a street soccer type environment, it actually holds up pretty well. And again, the traction is quite good as well. So overall, it's a good shoe to use for indoor soccer or as kind of a street soccer option. And of course, we do need the turf variation. They do offer that as well for use on artificial grass or kind of that rough carpet turf type material. So all in all, very good shoe. Again, it's an indoor version of the Phantom 2, so you kind of know what you're getting into. And considering that the Phantom 2 retails for $275 and these guys retail for $150, you're essentially getting the exact same upper, a very similar experience for half the price. The only downside is obviously they don't come with studs. In regards to weight, this is obviously not gonna be as light as a pair of firm ground Phantom 2s, but I wouldn't describe them as heavy feeling either. So I'm gonna weigh this pair for you today in real time using this scale. Keep in mind, this is a brand new pair in a size 9 US. Gonna throw them on the scale, and you can see that they weigh in at 9.45 ounces, right at the nine and a half ounce mark, the equivalent of 268 grams. So they weigh about two ounces more than the firm ground variation of the Phantom 2. 
Uh, and again, not overly lightweight, but definitely not heavy either. Again, they wanted to maintain the upper of the Phantom 2, but at the same time, you get a decent amount of impact protection and a fair amount of rubber on the bottom of your foot, which is not only good for traction, but it also is going to, uh, I guess, increase the longevity and lifespan of the shoe itself. So durability was kept in mind, build quality was kept in mind, uh, and again, it's light enough. I really don't think they feel heavy on your feet, but if you do want something super, super light, these aren't necessarily gonna have that ultra lightweight kind of weightless sensation, if you will, on your feet. Nonetheless, if you want an indoor version of the Phantom 2, this is still your best option. All right, so here is a look at the Hypervenom X Proximos on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of light coral glow-in-the-dark SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So be sure to go ahead and check that out. Now, in terms of how you things fit and feel on feet they're fairly comfortable out of the box the upper does have some firmness to it mainly to due to the liner on the inside but it does soften up significantly after a few hours of wear time and once it is well broken in it is very soft very flexible you get good structure and good lockdown from those flywire cables built into the upper when you pull the laces tight. And of course, this does have a mid-cut collar from Nike, which means that the fit in the heel is a little bit unusual, at least in comparison to a regular low-cut shoe. So it'll feel a little bit stiffer at first. It's strongly recommended that you kind of take your time with the break-in process. Don't wear these straight into a game or straight into a free kick session. As long as you take your time with them, again, after a couple hours, just like the rest of the upper, you should get used to how they fit and feel and really avoid any kind of major discomfort or blistering or anything like that. As far as width is concerned, it is a tighter fitting shoe, but not so much so uh, like the Mercurials. It's a little bit more uh, wide in comparison to that shoe. So they'll be suitable for most people as long as you don't mind a tighter fitting shoe. And as far as stretching is concerned, a little bit of that in the toe box area, but obviously you do have the fly wire running through the forefoot and midfoot, and that is not going to stretch. So width wise, they'll fit most people, but not the best option for super, super wide feet. As far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size nine US here, and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right, guys, that's it for my review of the Floodlights Go Nike Hypervenom X Proximo Indoors. If you guys are interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can click either the first link down below or the little eye in the corner of the screen. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $150 retail price. If you have any questions regarding this shoe, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information linked in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, thanks for watching.